Good evening, family. Listen, I'm not going to stay on here long because I got to go check on my pots and stuff like that. I got some stuff I'm cooking. But I want to share this right quick. I just spoke with um, one of my, my good brothers, a good brother in Yah. And uh, we almost stayed on the phone for almost two hours. The only reason we got off is because his um, phone is going dead, almost going dead. And so I want to share this. Um the remnant this message is for the remnant of god and this is my two cents marriage advice and i've never been married before and so if anyone wants to go ahead and click off the video um you may not want to hear what i have to say um giving marital advice because i've never been married so you can go ahead and click off the video right um but for the remnant of god i want to advise my brothers and sisters this i've always said this and I'm going to advise you again. You know, I know towards the latter part of the year when it gets cold, people get their little booze and stuff like that. And they want to cuddle buddies and all of that. Um, but be very careful who you tie your soul with and who and don't jump into a marriage just because somebody has the certain external factors. Right. And they may have a good paying job. They may drive a decent car. They may live in a decent house. They may be independent, self-sufficient, and um, they may be, for women, they, a man may be able to take care of himself and be a provider for you as well, but don't let that be your determination. Again, this message is only for the remnant of God because the remnant of God, your spirit is very different. Your spirit is sensitive. You know, you are very, many of you are very empathetic. And even the things that happen within the earth, your spirit is sensitive to it. Too much evil, chaos, it can really cause you to be sick, you know, spiritually. Because your heart, your spirit is very fragile, very sensitive when it comes to things. Even some of the things that when you go out into the earth and you begin to discern. And if this don't apply to you, go ahead and click off the message because this ain't for you. But this is me giving my sincere earnest advice and it's not just sisters i'm talking to my sisters and my brothers those of you who are the remnant who got that pureness of heart you love y'all and you love when you love you're a hard lover and you got a lot of love on the inside of you you ain't trying to hurt nobody you ain't trying to play games with nobody and you may want love you may want to be married but my sincere advice would be don't marry anyone for any external things you got to marry someone that you got for one, God approves them and you get to know their spirit because if the spirits do not agree, you will be, that can, that, that you can either die prematurely and live a, a or live a complete miserable life of chaos. Right. And that's not how a marriage should work. You know, that's not how a marriage, that's not a happy marriage. You could be married to somebody that stays with you uh, because you're a provider. You can provide for them, but they really don't like you. And you're really miserable. They, you're never together. You see some married couples, they're never together. They never want to do anything together. You know, um, my family, on my grandfather's side of my family, all of my, a majority of all of my aunts and uncles um, are married. And I see my aunts and uncles, when, when, if, whenever I visit my aunts and uncles, um, when I, when I'm around them, I talk to both of them. Like they're, they're always together. They vacation a lot. Many of them are retired now. Some of them been married over 30, 40, 50 something years and they vacation. Some of them are out vacation on, you know, vacationing now. <laughs> and when I talk to them, I can talk to both of them. You know, I can see the happiness when they do things together. They're doing things together. They're always together. You know, the, uh, so it's like they're in each other's business. Some of them even run a business together. They work together. Not saying that they're not ups and downs. We're human beings. We, all human beings will have differences. I'm sure I've, I've, they, I've, I've laughed at some of times when I've seen the little arguments and stuff like that over the years growing up, little small little things going back and forth. But it's, it's, it's the, even that is in love. You know, and I'm a woman myself. I know what a happy woman looks like. And just like some of you men, you know how to identify a happy man, right? And so when you come together with somebody who is not on one accord with you spiritually, 
I'm not talking about you working, he working. You working, she working. You got money, she got money. You got money, he got money. You got your own, he got his own. I'm not talking about those external things, baby, because you could take somebody who broke and ain't got nothing. A, a woman can. <laughs> I don't know what y'all men can do, but a woman can take a brother whose heart is in the right posture and ain't really got nothing and she can turn them into something. That's the gift of having a good woman and a woman that loves you. A woman can make something out of nothing. And brothers, I don't know. Y'all speak up. I don't know if y'all can make something out of nothing. But I'm just saying, when the right woman is backing a man, she makes him better. She perfects him. Why? Because she loves him. And she just carries that gift on the inside of her. But my brother told me, he said, by all means, share my story and share what I'm going through if it's going to help somebody avoid this. You know, he, he's, he's a, she's a straight up brother. You know, he prays for me. Sometimes I pray for him when he needs somebody to pray for, but he's going through so much. And he said, I made a mistake. What I did was, and he married the first and only woman that he's ever been with. You know, he's, his wife is his first woman that he's ever slept with, but obviously she got things going on and she's not his first, but still yet he has been faithfully committed and eaten and, and, and she stepped out on him. And she, he, he works a lot. Right. And so he's tried to figure out maybe I did something wrong. Maybe, you know, I didn't protect her enough. He's always trying to make sure he does the right thing. He's already went to counseling. You know, he's gotten her to go to counseling, but it's like from the beginning, he, he went back and began to trace his steps. And he said it was lust. Cause in the, even in the beginning, he had an issue with her talking to other guys, but he loved her and he wanted to be with her. You know, and even the kids that they have after testing and stuff, one of the latter children is not even his. She's stepped out on him in that marriage so many times. And it's like he gets to the point where he's trying to pray, you know, he's fasting. But it's like she does things but as a woman. You know, a woman should not do that. She does things to continuously show that. You know, he was like, is this the sex? Is this, is the sex not good enough? And no, that's not it, you know? And he's like, I really don't understand what is it, you know? Because, you know, I he I like, he's like, I like having sex and she enjoys my sex, but she says, that's not it. But she still stepped out with this guy. And, then, you know, and and, and then he, he can't get it. And I said, what it is, is clearly after listening to the totality of the situation, he's a provider. You know, he's wondering, did I protect her well enough? And he did, you know, it's just that based on everything that is going on, all of the clear signs are there that they're not spiritually yoked. And that has always been my advice to anybody wanting to get married. You can dot all the I's, you can dot all the T's, but spiritual is what's really matter. Because it don't matter if a person is able to, you, you you bust your back for somebody and you show them how much you love them. You give them everything you have, including the shirt off your back. If that person is not submitted and you're submitted to Christ, if that person is not equally yoked with you spiritually, whatever's on them is going to fight you in that marriage. And clearly he says, I don't get what it is. I said, her, your spirit irritates her. She's irritated by your spirit. It's not the sex. He's like, I'm wondering, she said it's not, but I'm wondering, am I good enough for her? He's like, you know, we're always there. You know, when she wants me, I'm there. When I want her, we have sex. There's no problem. I said, that's not, clearly that's not it. Your spirit is what irritates her, is who you are spiritually. And he said, you know what? That's confirmation. But it's like, I, I, I go back and I try to figure out how can I get her to where she needs to be? And see, this is the thing. When you love somebody, you will pour out your heart, your life. The Bible tells us to guard our heart for everything flows from it. It's not just women. Of course, us women and men, we don't always think alike. There's a lot that I still don't understand about men. You know, I can ask questions to my uncles and stuff like that. But I think you really learn each other when you spend more time with each other, especially when you're trying to build a friendship with somebody. And I always say, how can you marry? How can you want to marry me? And you can't even be a good friend to me. We ain't even we can't even talk on the phone for three days straight without the nonsense. We really can't even have a face to face conversation without you uh, make it like making me frustrated because I can listen to you and I can hear where you coming from, but you always got to cut me off 
when I'm not going in the direction that you're going in. And then you always got to curse me with your words. Because what I have learned, personal experience, when a man wants you, when, when a man wants something, it's like you can listen to them and give them feedback and they soak all of that. But when then when you're talking about your stuff and your what you got going on, oh, you don't need to be doing all that. Oh, you can't keep doing that by yourself. Oh, you don't need to. It's like the, all those are word curses. When you're telling a woman who is doing it by themselves, they can't keep doing this. They can't keep doing that. You know, it's like, okay, how is this conversation benefiting me? Because clearly I'm already doing it. You're not recognizing any of my strengths. Uh, why I keep myself and do operate the way that I operate. It's just that you want to be so connected to you saying you can't keep doing that. You know, I, I know you may do some things and you want to do those things, but that's not how you talk to me. That's not how you keep my attention with all of that negative feedback, you know? And so it's like with him, I see he's trying so much when, you know, because he loves her and because he loves her, he's trying to, you know, figure out how can I get her to be where I am spiritually. But every time he talks about the Bible, he says, we could talk about just about anything, but I love the Lord. And he says, my mom knows this. My dad knows this. I talked to my uncles. His uncle's a preacher. You know, he's talked to some other elders, um, from the different, another church that he visits or fellowships with. And, he says, everybody knows this about me. Since I was a child, I have always loved the Lord. He does have a genuine love for the Lord. and But he says, anytime we talk anything about that, it's like that's where we disconnect, you know? And so it's so clear to see that this spirit is not of the same. They're not of the same spirit. And me personally as a woman, I don't have a problem maintaining myself, keeping myself if uh, I, if if a if a man does not have eyes to see there's been several times that the different guys have tried to marry me some have even lied on god they said that god told me that you were going to be my wife and really that's what the, some men will say when they really want to you know real they want you to go ahead and submit and accept them but god can speak to all of us and god did not tell me that these previous men that have said that were going to be my husband and for one thing I can really always test is when a, when a man doesn't have eyes to see. I know that that's not my mate. Because when you are the remnant, your partner needs to be able to recognize you spiritually. They need to be able to see you. But also don't let that knock you off of your feet and let that make you take your guards down if you meet somebody who can discern you a little bit. Time reveals all things because you have a lot of diviners out here. You have a lot of people who operate and put their hand in darkness. Remember what Laban told Jacob? I know through divination that I've been blessed because of you. He knew Jacob was a blessed man because he looked him up spiritually. So sometimes you have to give it time too. And, and, and over time, you'll know if that spirit is running parallel with your spirit or not because you love God. You're not looking for nobody to pull you back. And God is not going to send you nobody to pull you back to have a facade and a mask on to pretend that they are fully surrendered to Christ. But as they get you to let your guards down, you see they're into all of this dark stuff over here. And they just were sent by the devil to captivate your heart and break you down. You see what I'm saying? Because the devil sends people too. So if they don't have eyes to see you, how can they protect you spiritually? You can be the biggest, tallest, most muscular, strongest man and still not be able to protect a little old thing like me. See, because if you can't protect me spiritually, you can't protect me at all because life is spiritual. If you cannot see what's happening when you are the remnant, you always constantly have. Like my brother always say, he always says, daughter. You always have this opposition because of who you are in God. You are a strong woman in God. He always tells me this. You are a strong woman in God. And when we're strong in God, these battles and these things that come at us, they come real heavy. The devil is always trying to re-strategize, you know. And there's a lot of Jezebel spirits that are always come after me. I noticed that. Jezebel will always come after the remnant of God. The purpose is to destroy and they don't always have to be in a seductive way. They don't always come to try to entice the flesh. Sometimes they come to penetrate the heart. So they will come telling you nice things. They will come giving gifts or acting as if they are accepting of you as if they can recognize you to lure you in and let your guards down. Because in this day and time, nobody, there's a lot of selfish people. Nobody really, you know, acknowledges and, and shows a lot of love to their brothers and sisters. 
and, and people ha are very covetous these days. And so sometimes you have Jezebels that will come in and try to do kind things for you or tell you about, oh, you're so powerful, anointed in Christ. Go, go break through that phase. You know, still don't let your guards down. There are phases and levels you go to let time reveal what a person's spirit, even my brother. Now, this friendship that we have has built over the course of, I would say, almost seven, six, maybe six, five, six years or so. But it takes time to keep observing people, to watch their fruit. And nobody is perfect. None of us is perfect. People have bad days sometimes. You know, people go through things, but it takes time to observe somebody's fruit. And then you can see, oh, you know what? They're not really a gossipy person. They're not really mingling. Oh, okay, these people over here are committing adultery, but this brother over here, he don't be up in women's face and he keeps himself, you know, and he, you know, he he's always seen like he's giving sisters advice and stuff like that. Like my this brother, some sisters, this group that he was in with, he's very talented. Some sisters were doing things that were not really professional wise, this professional group that he was in. And he gave the young girls advice. He said, I don't think you should be putting out your pictures like that in public, showing all your cleavage and your, your breasts and stuff like that. He's like, cause you never know who's out there and it's not good. And so the sisters took offense. He was trying to be more protective from a man's point of view is saying, you know, these, how these guys are going to start viewing you, but they got offended at this brother's advice. When really, I knew he wasn't coming from a bad place. They go, oh, a man should not be criticizing no woman pictures and, and, and doing all of that. But really, what they were doing and how, what they were putting out, it wasn't professional. He was telling them the right thing, you know? And so I observed this brother for some time. And I listened to the words he says over time. And I see this is, he's solid. He is who he is in God. He really comes from a genuine place, you know? And so my brothers and my sisters, take your time. I know that, you know, uh, like Solomon said, two is better than one, right? God did not make man to be alone. That's why he took Eve from his Adam's rib, right? And he gave her, he made her for Adam so that he wouldn't be alone. And the two shall become one flesh, right? But take your time. Take your time to study the spirit of an individual and don't think nobody has to be perfect. It's not about perfection. It's about being genuine, authentic, and real and getting to know whether this person is, if I'm in y'all, if I'm in y'all, and again, like I say, this message is only for the remnant. It ain't for everybody else because those are the world and those of other standards, they got different standards and it's okay. People got free will, right? It's not, God don't force himself on nobody. He don't force himself on us. So this message and advice is only for the remnant of God. Take your time and get to know the spirit. When you tie yourself with somebody whose spirit is equally yoked, you will be happily ever after. Does that mean that you won't have problems? Mm -mm. You'll have problems because Jezebel's going to come. You know, you'll have problems with the tests and the trials of life. But see, the two of you will strengthen one another. Because when you see seeing things, when you're waking up in the night, when you're having dreams, you know how to pray for your spouse. Your spouse knows how to pray for you and lay hands on you. The two of you are equally yoked spiritually. And that bond, that soul, those souls are not tied together. So you can be together and have fun together. You can see threats coming up together. You can see when people try to come in and, you know, and, and cause division. You can see when somebody's coming in to try to entice and seduce your mate. And you can give your, you can teach women, you can teach your husband about the mindset and how to recognize a toxic woman you, fellas you can teach your, your 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 wives how to recognize a toxic man you can be a father to your to your wife you can be a mother to your husband you can be a best friend how do i know this because i can observe this from my aunts and uncles in my own family even though my father was never there i learned a lot from my father and the best thing i think i learned was how to keep my heart guarded no man has ever broken my heart before. Now, have I been betrayed by friends? Yes, I have been betrayed by friends. I've, I'm an only child from both of my parents. I've always wanted siblings. You know, I went about doing it my way, thought I could join into secret societies and then into sororities and stuff like that. But that wasn't God's way for me. You know, that wasn't how he was meant to give me brothers and sisters. And I had to come out of all of that stuff, right? But... The greatest thing I've learned by my father not being there, by my father being the first and only man to ever break my heart, is how to keep my heart guarded, how to recognize um, bad spirit. I'm going to leave it like that. How to recognize the bad spirit, you know, 
the master manipulators, the 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 the, the, the narcissists. I, I learned how to recognize those things from much of the pain and the lies and the you know and the betrayals that I went through growing up. You know, but to this day, I don't walk around with hate in my heart for my father. I have forgiven him. My father has even called me. I think I shared last year to apologize. He didn't name everything that, but I, I already, I didn't really want to hear him name everything, but the forgiveness was, was already there before he even called. You know, he called me um, last week because I sent, I, or he loves to go fishing. We really don't have much of a relationship, but still yet there is on my part, there is, I don't hold nothing into him, you know, nothing against him. If he was to call, I'll listen to whatever, but it's not like we have a strong, we don't have a strong bond, but I'm not angry. I'm not bitter. You know, if pain comes up, sometimes if I think about some of the things from my childhood, I do feel pain and I allow myself to feel, I allow myself to acknowledge the truth and cry, but I will never go and try to publicly or, 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 uh, you know, like assassinate or just, just put my father down you know, because he, he went through stuff in his childhood and period. I wouldn't try to put anybody down and make anybody look bad. It's just reality is what it is, but I don't hold that, you know, and in fact, I don't hold what he's, you know, his shortcomings against him. I forgive him, you know, because it made me stronger and the type of woman I am, I've never met any female friends like me. I've never met women who were even interested or could do some of the things that I could do. I know that they're out there, <laughs> you know, but um, it made me, it didn't break me. It made me stronger. So it was like a blessing. You know, I, I couldn't say this years ago as a child, I was hurt, you know, and I would always cry a lot. And even today, if I talk about certain things, it will, I will feel, I can feel the pain, but I am very strong. And I thank my father for that. Right. And then, um, a few weeks ago, he likes to go fishing. So I ordered these, something that I never seen before telescoping, um, fishing canes. I never seen anything like that before, but I was just thinking it was just on my spirit to get him a gift. And so it was just out of the blue and I, um, ordered a gift and it was, it came in a pack where two telescoping fishing canes where you could actually push, push them all the way in and actually put them in a little small tote bag. And then when you're ready to use them, pull them all the way out. They come way out and they come with all the lines and everything on it. And I just like, wow, that thought that was just so cool. So I ordered it. And then uh, when my mom was here visiting, I sent it by her and asked her, would she drop it off and give it to him? And so she did. And then he called me and he was like, oh, wow, thank you so much. He was like, I don't think I'm, I said, let me know how you like it. He's like, I don't think I'm going to ever use it. I said, why? He's like, because I, well, he said, I don't want it to break. I said, well, if it breaks, you can get more or whatever. He said he going to just look at it, keep it and look at it or whatever. He said he was happy for it, you know, and so that just, we just laughed about that. And then I got off the phone or whatever, you know, and so I feel free because now I, when I used to carry a lot of pain in my heart, oh, you couldn't get my number. No man couldn't get my number and don't call me pretty. Don't, don't tell me that I'm pretty and dare not say the S word, the sexy part, because that's disrespectful. You know, I was just so stern and so um you know just no no regard for because I was so angry with my father that it was it was really pain right and what I said earlier in my video I think I said sometimes we come out with anger but be, but what's fuel, fueling that anger is the pain behind it and so because I don't really carry that pain like I said if I talk about something and it makes me feel if I feel the emotion I will cry like I I'm not going to pretend and, and not allow myself to feel and be a normal human being. That's what makes me human. But if I talk, if I share memories of the past, when you're sharing something, you have to relive it. And when you have to relive something that you're sharing from the past, you have, you feel, you know, you experience that. And so, you know, I allow myself to feel, but I'm free, you know, and I notice in life today, when I go out places, this wasn't years ago, it, it wasn't really like that. Or if it was like that, maybe I blocked it. But a lot of men, even more so now as I'm getting older, a lot of brothers from different races, white, black, Hispanic, they love to talk to me, you know? And sometimes I'll be like, what do you want to talk to me for? You know, and it's just, it's just something that lets me know, you know, I too am, am, am healing, you know, or I have healed from that part of that place where I had such great pain in my heart, you know? But anyway, that's what I wanted to share. Take your time, take your time, my brothers and my sisters, to 
um, be equally yoked. Don't go by beauty. My brother said it. He said in the beginning it was lust. She was beautiful. Um, and we, we, we went out for a few weeks and like talk, I dated her. And then we ended up having sex. He said, she was the first woman that I ever had sex with. And then he said, in my mind, I said, well, I just can't walk away from her. I have to step up and be a man. And so he worked and he got a place for them. And, you know, he wanted to take her in and marry her, you know, from the beginning. But he said, I never really studied her spirit or anything like that. It was just, you know, I liked her. She showed interest in some of the things I was doing. And the more he's like, you know, sometimes when you spend time around somebody, that flesh will kick up. And he's like, that's why, I, you know, as a married man, I never put myself in those situations where I allow my flesh to, you know, he said, if the flesh rises, you know, sometimes when you want to do it and it's true. And so when I believe when you protect yourself, because we're all living in this flesh and, and, and having the desire for sex um, it's not wrong. It doesn't make you a sinner. It actually means that it's, it's a sign that you are healthy if you still have the desire for sex. Sometimes people just don't have the desire. They never get aroused in their flesh. And sometimes it could be because of a medical issue. You know, I have the desire for sex, even though I'm not having sex, I am living a clean life. Um, but this is nothing wrong with that, you know? Um, and so he says, we slept together and I, and I decided I had to be a man. I had to step up. And ever since the beginning, you know, when they, when they moved in together, when they got married, he still would catch her on the phone with guys. And he's like, what are you doing? And even, you know, now into this time now, he said he, she had a guy friend and he would come home and the guy would be in his house. They're watching, he's watching a basketball game. And he's like, what the hell is this? And she's like, what do you mean? I can't have male friends. And then he's like, you know, I'm not trying to be controlled. I'm like, why she need male friends coming to the house when you're her husband, you know, like I don't, for me, my man would never have a woman in my home when I come home. That that's a no, no. Now, not saying that you can't have mutual male friends or mutual, you know, uh, female friends and stuff like that. But I think that when you are with somebody, me personally, I would never put up with that. You ain't going to be no woman in my house with my man. I don't care who it is. That's something that I would never put up with because we're all living in this flesh, you know, and I don't care how, what title somebody has. I don't care how long we've been knowing them. No, you're not going to have a woman in my house when I'm not around. And even when I am around, ain't no need for too much women to be around your man anyway. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's vice versa, but, um, to have that happen. And he's like, well, no, it's not that you can't have male friends, but he's like, Emma, he's like, I was discerning something anyway. You know, like, it's just disrespectful. You're paying all the bills. You're going out working. You're coming home to somebody who doesn't cook. They're, you have to cook when you come home for the children. They have a, another man is in your house watching a basketball game. You know, it's disrespectful. It's disrespectful. That My aunt said, I, I don't think my uncles would go for anything like that. I think they would, I think we'd be having to go to court and um try to see if we can beg the judge not to give them so much time if my aunts was to do something like that. <laughs> you know? But people of God, get to know the spirit within somebody. And for those of you, my brothers and sisters who are married, um, please add your two cents. Add your two cents because, and, and, and especially many of you, uh, my brothers and sisters who always say you and your wives or you and your husbands watch this little YouTube channel or whatever, Please add your two cents because clearly, you know, many of you are in happy marriages. You love one another and, um, you know, you can add to much of what I have already said, right? But again, people of God, you that are in Christ, take your time. Get to know the spirit behind somebody. There's a lot of warfare that we deal with in this earth. Do you want to even tie your soul with somebody who cannot understand warfare? And not on that road to trying to learn, you know, when you need somebody to talk to, when you need somebody to pray with you, when you're fighting these battles, do you need somebody to say, oh, Lord, here goes something happening to you again. Or do you need somebody who can, you you know, you can distinguish between these spirits and have these talks? You know, if you can't talk, if you're going through this life now where it gets so difficult sometimes and there's not many people you can talk to, a lot of people don't understand spiritual warfare. Why would you tie your soul with somebody? who, um, you know, you can't speak to on that level, right? 
Why would I tie my soul with somebody who I can't speak to on that level? Who can't protect me on that level? Who when I'm feeling overwhelmed and burdened down and, you know, I need prayer and you can't even get a prayer through. I can't come and bow down to you and say, baby, just hold me. I just need you to pray for me. You should be able to discern some things about me. You know, you should be able to minister to my spirit. I should be able to minister to your spirit. You know, the two shall become one. How can we become one if your spirit is getting irritated with my spirit? If my spirit is getting irritated with your spirit, how can the two become one? But when we're having sex, we can, we don't want to court for sex. When we're breaking bread together, we don't want to court with eating. But when we're talking about the word of God, psh, mm -mm, that's the foundation right there. That's the foundation right there. He's the center. Right? And so anyway, save yourself the heartache. There's a lot of people going through heartaches out here, not just sisters, brothers as well. Not just sisters, it's brothers as well. But we, we also have to take accountability for, you know, sometimes we make the wrong choices. Sometimes we let our flesh lead us, right? And... We are not spirit led and the flesh will only lead us to destruction. You know, the flesh will lead us to destruction or maybe what we want. We're so eager to get married. We want that ring so bad. You know, if I would have taken a ring, I could have done taken three rings by now. And let me tell you, I would have been divorced three times. I would have done been divorced. And I know people who've been divorced 50 million times. And now they, some of them, like, they just so holy for God and they got all the answers and stuff like that. But it's like, if you got all these answers, then, you know, anyway. But listen, that's just my little two cents. I've never been married before. Um, if I do get married in this lifetime, I'm not anxious to get married. If I do get married in this lifetime, it will be God sent. Um, I will do my best to make sure that I confirm in the spirit that this is who God is sending. And I know that there's going to be ups and downs. Nothing is perfect, you know. Um, nobody is perfect. I'm not perfect, you know. Um, but at the same time, when God joins something together and it's spiritual, you be on one accord. I know what a happy wife looks like. I am a woman, you know, and um, I know what a happy marriage looks like. I know how my aunts and uncles get along. I know how they like being around each other. I see them. They can sit in the house and talk and laugh and you know, go to bed in the same room and sleep in the same bed together. Um, get up. My aunts can cook breakfast. And, you know, sometimes my uncle cook and stuff like that. And they can go out and eat together, vacation together, laugh and talk together. Um, you know, I know what that looks like. And I will not settle for anything less, you know. Um, and, and I also, like I said, I'm not anxious to get married. Um, I know what women who have gone through a lot of pain I know what they've been experiencing you know there's a lot of things behind the scenes that people don't even see you know a lot of people have had to um go into shelters um domestic violence is very real um even in the state you know it's it's very high for domestic violence there's been a lot of people who have really had to um have their name changes um they've had to go under aliases um I've even had brothers and brothers and sisters um I mean, not so much of the brothers who've had to run and change their identity, but I've, a lot of brothers have been going through things and praying for the ones that they love to change. You know, a lot of sisters have had to go to domestic violence shelters and they had children in the midst of that. And because of the children, you know, the, the, the ones, the, the spouses that were chasing them were trying to make it difficult. You know, you've even had some people, some have even taken the children and, and ran to another state and, you know, cause so much issues. It's a lot. And with my brother, you know, he said, people think I'm a simp because, you know, everybody's asking, why are you still here? What y'all going to do? I said, well, I already know, you know, I already know the type of man he is. He's not a simp. He's not weak, but people take, I said, because you do walk in simplicity, like all of us do, when you come in simplicity, you're just a down to earth person. You have a pure heart. His heart is very pure. People take your kindness for weakness. And so, but he's very strong, you know, people will take that kindness for weakness. And I said, I already know the type of person you are. If, the, if they did not have any children, he would have been gone just, he would have been gone already. 
But because of those children, it's kind of difficult. And wanting the best, loving the children, wanting the best for the children, you know, wanting both parents to grow up in the same household. But it's just like this it's, 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 it's like I'm being fought on every side, you know, I'm being fought on every side. And you can't keep living in the house. I know the Bible tells us if you are a believer and you marry an unbeliever, don't divorce that unbeliever for being an unbeliever because perhaps you can change them, you see. And so he's pondered over all of those scriptures as well. The Bible does give you grounds for divorce when it comes to adultery, which he has legal ground for divorce on multiple charges, <laughs> you know. Um, but the fact that this brother is staying is because of his love for those children. If those children were in the way, he's kind of fed up now to this point because he's he knows that he's already done everything that he could do, right? But um, these are just one of the painful things that, you know, people go through. And like I said, me being a single woman, baby, I go to bed, I sleep good every night, even with trouble in the earth, even when I have frustration at work, busy days, business seems to be off and on, I could come home to peace. You see what I'm saying? You know what peace, being single, take your time, enjoy yourself, get to learn yourself. What do you like to do? What makes you happy? You know, and of course, having companionship, good companionship, somebody you can fellowship with, talk to, begin to share certain things with and confide in, having a confidant, all in a mate, your spouse is a blessing. <clears throat> But it takes time to get there. How can you marry me and you can't be a good friend to me? We ain't been friends for two seconds yet and you're already cursing me with your mouth. Not directly saying cuss words, but you're already limiting me and, 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 and prophesying negativity, negativity to my future, to my career. You can't keep doing this. You can't do all of that. You can't, you can't, you can't. The Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. And if I've been doing it before I met you, and now that I meet you and you want access into my life, into my heart, what can you do? Rather than saying, you can't do all of that. Oh, you see, sometimes when a man is intimidated by a woman's strength, the first thing that man, well, I would say a boy, because a man don't men don't do this. But when a boy is intimidated by a woman's strength, the first thing he will do sometimes is when he sees you operating in your strength, first thing he'll do is start watching you from afar. Sometimes they'll start competing against you. All of this, men have this very competitive thing. And when I see this men competing against a woman, that's the big turnoff, right? I don't care how it is, you know? And so sometimes what they'll do is then they'll start criticizing you. Oh, see, a woman like that, see, you think you can be your own man and your woman. Goodbye. Goodbye. I ain't got time for it. <laughs> see, that's your insecurity. Your insecurity. See, because I, I got brothers that I communicate with. I got brothers that can feed into me and recognize and acknowledge and give me feedback, you know? And so when I see that, you I already know. Mm -mm. Something about me you's intimidated by. If I'm doing it myself and God has blessed me to do it, why can't you see the strength and the power of God working through my life? To be that provider. To, why can't you see that this is God showing himself in my life? But you look at it as I'm trying to be my own woman and my own man. And I mean, hey, if that's how you see it, baby, then hey, thank you, God. Thank you. I do what I got to do and make no apologies about it. God is a provider. He is a protector. You see? And so when the right person comes along who's worth listening to, who's worth your time, they're going to take time to learn you, not to compete against you, not to go and secretly, you know, or try to sabotage your efforts or undermine you in any way because they want to see how they can fit in, what they can do to take a load off of you. I know my uncle's done taught me, you know, my uncle done dead and in the ground now. But I had one of my uncles that used to say, I mention him all the time. He had, when he used to come, when I first bought my house and I used to cut the grass and stuff, he said, you ain't doing that while I'm here. He said, mm -mm. he said, if a man can't do S-H-I-T, you don't need him. And he'll tell me, so now, baby, put that down. I got it. I do that. I get to it. I'm going to do that. 
And if a man can't do nothing, he can't, he can't come. You know, you don't need him. He always told me that, you know, and I thank God for my uncles that have been a, a, a good strength in my life to have taught me many of the skills and have helped, you know, um, 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 bring out a lot of my strengths as a woman. You know, I got an uncle who's my mama's brother, um, who's so patient. If I was to call him and, you know, ask him questions, he'll say, you know, he'll teach me everything or answer. He'll take his time, answer all my questions. And sometimes if he don't know something, he's like, I don't know about that, but we can easily look it up. He's very smart. He's a master, um, welder. He's a master electrician. He's got his own business. Um, you know, and so he's he's good at doing things. You know, he's the one that taught me how to put shingles on my shed. And when I started building my shed, I didn't even know about a, a nail gun. I had all my hand was blistered up. My mama was here. When I first started building my shed, I was waiting on this guy. This um one of my friends, he gets saying, oh, I'll help you. It's cheaper to just build it yourself. Then don't go buy a storage room. That joker couldn't hang with me. He came one day and didn't come back and kept making excuses but he was coming back. I said, man, please. I jumped on that thing and started looking up stuff online and seeing if I could find, you know, like visual images to see how to, you know, build this, build the wall. And I called, and I was like, wait a minute, let me call my uncle. And when I called my uncle, when he came, he looked, he saw me. I had three walls built when they were leaning on my fence and I had the foundation already done in the floor down. And he was like, you did that by yourself? I said, yeah, my mama helped me bam some of the nails. I said, see, look at my hand. He said, you ain't had no nail gun? <laughs> my hand was full of blisters. <laughs> All I had was a hammer. I didn't know what no nail gun was. And he was like, no, we got to get a nail gun. And then he said, we got to get a roofing gun to get the shingles up. So we went to Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight is my favorite store, baby. I got all the tools. If I if they need to build a house, I got the tools for it. Just probably need some more nails and definitely some more wood. Um, My uncle said I did a little overkill when I was building the walls because i got more than enough you like but this is strong it ain't going nowhere <laughs> oh lord i think i got some of the pictures on here when i was building the shed when i was building that shed but anyway that's my little two cents y'all have a blessed day if nobody told you that they love you this is the second time i'm telling you god bless you i love you right take your time and learn the spirit first you that are the remnant you must be a soul your souls must be equally yoked it's spiritual. It's not about the physical things. You can make money. Money can come, you know. And when your heart is right, in the right posture, God going to bless you anyway. You know, when you're a woman walking virtuously, uprightly with God, and then you meet a man who comes into your life and his heart posture is right towards you, you join together spiritually, God will bless that union. He will bless him for doing right by you. He will bless you for being the woman that you are. Everything you put your hands to, it'll bless it. It'll keep. If you was already doing good single, when you get with your rightful mate, if that's your desire in the earth, when you get with your rightful mate, what if you was if you was blessed singly, whichever you was putting your hand to single, when you join together, it's gonna multiply even triple and quadruple, right? So anyway, that's just my little two cents. Have a blessed day. Girl, no her stuff. She has skills. Mm -hmm. Go, girl. Do your thing.
doing a little shrug, don't you? Can't dance. I come on the dance part. So she sure knew what she was doing when she built this. We built it. We built that. Yes. I'm not leaving myself out. Oh yeah. I had my hand in this too.